Good everyone, B Asian Dad here. We're going to do the review for the Lenovo ThinkPad T14 AMD. Now this is the Ryzen 7 version I've got here, and I already did an in-depth review of the Lenovo ThinkPad T14 Intel version, and pretty much it does cover most of the features, which is very similar to this AMD version here. So if you haven't checked that video out, I'll put a link in the description below so you can actually watch that video after this. So what's the difference between the AMD version and Intel version is of course, besides the processor, with the Intel version, it does have vPro support. Now the AMD does not have vPro support. Now what vPro support is, it's for enterprises and businesses that actually do remote management. Now AMD do have their own version, it's just that you do need a little bit of setup just to have that integrated into your business systems. And the other thing that with the Intel version has got is the USB-C. This does have USB-C on the AMD version, but the USB-C on the Intel version is Thunderbolt 3 enabled. So you do get a little bit faster speed for the USB-C port there. But else, that's pretty much about it. So we'll be looking to the thermals, the fan noise, as well as the performance and the cost of this AMD version of the T14. Now we'll be putting timestamps along this video so you can actually skip to the sections that you'll be interested in. So let's start on with it. As for the temperatures and fan noise of the Ryzen 7, when I put the computer on load, I found most of the heat is located near the top middle of the keyboard. Again, unsurprising because that's where the process sits. Now. When I did the measurements, my ambient temperature was 22 degrees Celsius. And of course I did my base measurement when the computer was on idle and the hottest area of the keyboard was measured in at 34.5 degrees Celsius and the fan noise was 31 decibels. So that's practically quiet. Then I put the computer on 20% load. So that's pretty much average use. So that's tasks like office productivity work as well as streaming videos and surfing the web and the maximum temperature on the keyboard was 37 degrees celsius with a fan noise of 32 decibels so still very very quiet and then i put the computer on 50 percent load and the maximum temperature on the keyboard was 41 degrees celsius and the fan noise maximum was 33 decibels then I put the computer at 100% load and the maximum temperature of the keyboard was 52.5 degrees Celsius and the maximum volume of the fan was 34 decibels. So that's actually very quiet for when the computer is even on 100% load and that is actually one decibel quieter than the Intel version. And I also measured the bottom back cover of the computer and the hottest area measured in at 57.5 degrees Celsius. So that's actually quite hot. So I would not be putting this on your lap. I don't advise any computer to be put on your lap there as well. As you can see, the Ryzen 7 still runs quite hot, but I've got to say, I wish to Lenovo do ramp up the fan a little bit so we can actually get a little bit better cooling to actually bring down some of the temperatures to maybe actually enhance even better performance. Let's look at the performance stability as well as if there is thermal throttling of the processor. Now this one is configured with the Ryzen 7 Pro 4750U processor with a base clock speed of 1.7 gigahertz. Now this computer has been running on load for about five and a half hours. So that's processor, RAM, disk, and also the GPU at mostly 100%. And we pretty much have a pretty stable anywhere between 2.7 to about 2.8 gigahertz. So it is not dropping below 1.7. So it doesn't have any thermal throttling, which is really good. And it's maintaining quite a high clock speed as well. And this is for over five and a half hours of processing work here. Let's see how long this Ryzen 7 is able to maintain a high clock speed for. So I've got a stopwatch running here and we're going to have a look and I'm going to start the process off and I'll start the stopwatch off at the exact same time as well. So here we go. And pretty much, we're pretty much running at 3.66 gigahertz for, and still running at 3.11, 3.14, 3.15, 3.16. If it, below, if it drops below 3.3 is when I'm going to stop, stop the clock. There we go. So we're looking at around about 28 seconds is when it starts to struggle a little bit. And then it's, but it's pretty much gone straight back up again. So it's still running a very high maintained clock speed, as you can see here. So 3.3. So it's still running at 3.3. Now it's dropped back down to about 3. Yep. 
and then it's back to 3.6 just to give you a good idea how long that is able to sustain for I'm just going to keep the video running uh, 3.3 to 3.5 and that's a minute there by itself that's pretty decent and still going for pretty high clock speed at the moment so let's have a look if I can just bring that to about three here we go 3.3 we go it dropped a little but still gone back up again so that's pretty decent just to give you a good idea how long it's able to sustain these high clock speeds for I'm just gonna let it run off a little bit longer it's hitting around about bring this thing here I'm just going to bring it down here, just take this away. And we're about to hit about a two minute mark very soon. It's just going to, we're going to run off from this one here. So about two minute mark just passed there. Still running about 3.3 gigahertz there. Well, we'll just drop down to about three. Oh, it's gone back up again. So it's pretty decent there, about two minutes and still coming back up again and still maintaining a pretty high clock speed it's quite a very decent processor there I gotta say as for the battery life of the Ryzen 7 T14 I did perform around the four different modes now with my battery life test I do put a consistent workload on the processor RAM and hard drive and also the discrete graphics if it had any and also the screen brightness is turned up to a hundred percent as well so in best performance mode it managed to get an hour and 14 minutes and in better performance mode it managed to get an hour and 50 minutes a little bit better and then in better battery life i did drop the workload to 50 percent and also the screen brightness to 50 percent and it managed to get five hours and in battery saving mode it managed to get a very impressive 13 hours and 15 minutes i was pretty impressed by that for a business laptop now i did perform it in a medium mode now in medium mode i actually set the screen brightness to 50 percent and also the speaker volume to 50% as well and it's connected to Wi-Fi and it's pretty much streaming YouTube all the way through and it managed to get eight hours out of that so that's kind of what you'll expect for office productivity work as well so let's have a look at the performance of this Ryzen 7 T14 now I'm going to actually put up the scores for the pass mark and we're just going to drill it down a little bit for this particular one and as you can see I've got to include the i5 and the i7 of the t14 so you can do some comparison there and this is the overall scores so looking at the cpu scores and you can pretty much see the ryzen 7 is just giving the intel i5 and i7 a, quite a bit of a beat down here so the ryzen 7 is 57 percent faster than the i7 version of the t14 and is 88 percent faster than the i5 version of a t14 so that's some pretty incredible scores there and then if we look at the 2d scores they're pretty much nearly the same very similar there it is losing there but it's very similar in overall scheme of things and so we have to look at the 3d scores and you can pretty much see that the ryzen 7 is nearly double the speed of the i7 and the i5 in terms of 3d graphics in the score, I also included the Lenovo P14S i7 version. Now that's got a discrete graphics of the Quadro P520. Now this P14S does share the same chassis as the T14. And so this gives you a very good idea on the 3D graphics and you can see the Ryzen 7 is pretty much nearly chasing up to a discrete graphics. And so that's pretty mind blowing by itself. And then if we have a look at the memory score, it is losing a little bit to the Intel versions. And then if we look at the disk scores, it's also losing just a little tad in the disk scores. But overall, you'll find that it is actually quite quick. And in Citibench R20, with the CPU scores, it is pretty much double what the i7 and i5 is for score-wise. Now we'll also look at the single core of the CPU and it is also quicker there and usually that is generally an Intel head but this time we're having seen that the Ryzen 7 can also perform in single core speed as well so fantastic to see that. 
let's compare the prices of the Intel versus the AMD as this is a major factor between the two. And all of these prices are listed as of current, as of the filming of this video and they are listed in US pricing. And these are the starting pricing as well. So these have the configurations of eight gigs of RAM and 250 gigs hard drive and full HD non-touch display and with fingerprint reader as well. So with the Intel, with the i5, you're looking at $925. And with the Ryzen 5, which is its competitor, is $725. So that's $200 difference in price. That's a big savings. And with the i7 version, you're looking at $1,000. $175 and the Ryzen 7 version is $985. So that's $190 difference in price already. So you're actually saving a fair bit of money with the Ryzen 7 compared to the i7. I'm gonna give you something there interesting to think about. Now with the Ryzen 5, I haven't actually tested out the Ryzen 5 in the T14, but I have tested out the Ryzen 5 in a different type of computer. Now from my experience, the Ryzen 5 has very similar performance to even better performance than the i7. So definitely consider that if you really wanna save some money. But if you want the best performance, definitely go with the Ryzen 7 because you're actually getting a lot better performance, a lot of better performance and also it's a lot cheaper as well. So if you don't need the V Pro or Thunderbolt support, then definitely I will easily hands down look at the Ryzen 5 or the Ryzen 7 version of the T14. So hopefully you, this will help you with your buying purchase. If you find this video informative or enjoyed it and to support my channel, smack that like button for me. And if you haven't done already, subscribe to my channel by hitting that subscribe button at the bottom of the screen. I do try to upload a new video every week. And just remember, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. I'll see you next video.